Welcome to Voices on Aging, brought to you by Juniper Communities. My name is Janice Whitaker, and I serve as the Administrator and Community Liaison for the Center of Geriatric Nursing Excellence at the Penn State College of Nursing. I will be your host for today's important discussion on ways for seniors to stay connected and maintain emotional health during the COVID-19 pandemic especially in relation to those older adults living in senior living communities. Our guests are two members of the Juniper Communities Leadership Team. Diane Byrne is the Vice President of Program Development, Training and Operational Oversight. And Cindy Longfellow serves as Vice President of Business Development, Sales and Marketing. The COVID-19 safety guidelines to self-isolate have created new health risks by leaving many older adults even more socially isolated and inactive than previous. With social distance measures in place, many activities in senior living facilities have been canceled. Cindy, can you share how Juniper is overcoming this health risk for the residents in their communities? Of course, you know, uh, Janice, from the, the start of the pandemic, we realized that the uh, social distancing guidelines, the need even to be wearing masks universally, as well as the restrictions on visitation would really impact our residents, their families and our staff. And fortunately, uh, Lynn Katzman, our founder and CEO, recognized along with our teams that there was going to be an increasing need for technology and online and virtual resources that could be accessed either on individual or larger community smart devices, that those types of tools would be essential in order to continue to foster uh, well-being during the course of the pandemic. Um, we learned in the months since that we were right to do that. And that those resources, particularly some of those online resources, um, enabled us to continue to combat social isolation and really brighten our residents' lives over these many months. Yeah, so that's very interesting. And you mentioned specifically online resources. Could you elaborate on any specific opportunities for older adults that have been established online? Yeah, you bet. We were fortunate to partner with LTC REIT in the development of an online resource called Virtual Connections. Um, this is a programming portal and website that was really open source and enabled us to develop a platform that could provide resident engagement and social activity, not only for seniors living in communities like ours, but for older adults living at home or anywhere. Mm. So what types of activities are provided on this online platform? Wow, uh, where do I begin? Virtual Connections has grown uh, significantly from its inception in about uh, May or June of this year. Um, it really provides uh, free access to anyone to activity and entertainment resources. And some of the categories include things like culture and education, spirituality, sports, entertainment, and well-being. And initially we had, we're saying that we had hundreds of offerings available. And I talked with our site developers just recently, and we now can say we have thousands mm -hmm. of digital resources available on that site. And again, spanning the gamut from activities and games and reading materials, exercise videos, digital arts, museum, aquarium, and zoo webcams, 
just about anything that someone would have an interest in, they can find on that online resource. Well, it almost sounds like the sky is the limit and uh, virtual connection sounds very impressive. Uh, Diane, can you explain how this portal facilitates social interaction and resident engagement? Sure, thank you, Janice. Um, you know, this uh, new online resource um, makes the process of integrating tools for individual and group activities much more effective and comprehensive. Our associates can then use the uh, virtual connections portal with their iPads uh, for one-to-one -one interactions with our residents, as well as for uh, group engagement activities. Uh, the data-driven programming options can uh, support group activities and be personalized uh, to a significant level uh, for our individual residents. Uh, given the large number of residents, um, there are extraordinary differences uh, in terms of backgrounds and interests and in terms of psychosocial, physical and cognitive abilities uh, to deliver on our uh, person-centered care promise, it is uh, truly imperative that we utilize a data-driven approach and a technological approach to measure and enhance our resident engagement. Well, I certainly appreciate the very person-centered aspect of this platform. That sounds fabulous. As you mentioned, this is not only a platform that's available to residents at Juniper Communities, but beyond uh, at the greater community level. How could people access uh, the website for this? Great question, Janice. And we hope that lots of people do access the website and the address is www.slvirtual.com. So think SL like senior living, slvirtual.com. Great, thank you for sharing that. Cindy, please describe the impact that this has had on resident well being and how it has improved interaction between residents and staff in your communities. Great, yeah, it's, it's certainly been an important resource for us. Um, it's really allowed us to find new and different ways to keep our residents engaged in mind, body, and spirit. You know, I think when the pandemic first um, hit our communities, we were, we were floundering like everyone just a bit with how are we going to continue to provide personalized programs to our residents without being able to engage them in our typical wide variety of activities. And virtual connections filled that gap and enabled us to really look at our residents' interests, passions, and create personalized programming around that, utilizing those thousands of resources on the site. It's absolutely demonstrated a beneficial impact on resident engagement, satisfaction, happiness, all while reducing that sense of social isolation that we feared would be inevitable during the pandemic. Um, it really has served to provide kind of a continuous stream of new programming and ideas that we can deliver to our residents, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's individually on their smart tablet, or for a brief period of time when we were able, even in very small group settings. Has Juniper been able to foster connections with friends and family members in the wider community, given the various state and local restrictions? How has that process worked for you? Yeah, that's, that's been a challenge as well. Um, you know, when, when the initial restrictions to essential visitors only were promulgated in mid to late March, depending upon the state, we realized that we would have to quickly find ways to accommodate 
our residents and their families given those very restrictive guidelines. Um, we needed to find ways to keep our residents in close contact with their loved ones while still keeping them safe. And obviously virtual once again came to our rescue um, in this area as well. And we began to facilitate virtual visits between our residents and their loved ones using the technology of choice for that particular family. So, you know, some of the platforms we utilized were FaceTime, Zoom, Google Meet. We had to become proficient across a wide array of platforms. We also embraced the whole notion of window visits. You know, there's something about, even if you've got that pane of glass, seeing that individual in person. And we offered and continue to offer window visits at all of our communities. Some of those may be done right at the residence uh, window to their suite or apartment. Other communities have set up special areas that may have a bigger window or easier access to the window where all of those window visits are held. Um, so both of those really were a lifesaver to our residents and their families. And for a brief moment, at some of our communities, we even were able to offer outdoor visits. Um, but the you know third wave of the pandemic has really kind of <laughs> closed us down to those outdoor visits right now. Diane, would you like to explain any additional ways that Juniper is helping residents with their well-being and staying connected during the pandemic? Surely, uh, you know, connections and activities did not stop uh, just because we were sheltering in place. Uh, we moved to more virtual uh, events and incorporated a refresh mindfulness uh, program and a uh, get happy dance program uh, to uh, boost physical and emotional wellness and well-being. We continue to provide personalized one-to-one -one engagement, safe socialization and hallway activities, which our residents have really truly enjoyed. Um, these programs will continue uh, within our uh, yellow and green phases of the pandemic as well, joined by uh, indoor and outdoor walking and fitness groups, uh, small uh, group activities of uh, 10 or fewer participants, um, outdoor church events, weather permitting, uh, lawn concerts and uh, so forth, all with uh, proper social distancing and masking, of course. Um, also for our residents of uh, faith, uh, we continue to uh, connect uh, virtually with their uh, local places of uh, worship. So. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, can you provide some examples of events and engagement? You, you've explained some, but are there any specific, um, you know, there have been holidays that have come and gone. There are, you know, other types of activities that I know you usually integrate into the calendar year. How have those kinds of things been able to continue in some type of fashion in spite of the pandemic? Oh, absolutely, Janice. You know, during the pandemic, uh, there's been a perception of uh, lack of engagement for residents living and senior living. Uh, we all have seen the news broadcasts of uh, residents pining away in their rooms. Uh, However, at Juniper, uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, our teams uh, utilized uh, the virtual uh, connections uh, in a unique and in different ways uh, for both individual uh, engagement as well as group engagement. They all also found uh, interesting ways to connect face-to-face uh, -face while still uh, maintaining our resident safety. Uh, for example, um, 
we did various uh, hallway activities. Uh, the residents on a given hall uh, opened their doors and pulled up a chair, pulled up a little TV table uh, at the entry of their room and engaged in all sorts of games and sports like hallway balloon toss and uh, uh, hallway bowling, hallway trivia, hallway bingo uh, was uh, very much loved by many uh, and much more those types of kinds of events to allow people to uh, remain uh, connected. Um, we also, another uh, invention uh, that we came up with uh, was a, a concept of a festive food uh, cart. And uh, essentially, our team members prepared a festive snack or a festive uh, theme meal or ethnic meal. Uh, they dress up in costumes and decorated the food cart to coordinate with the theme and uh, sang and danced their way through the community, spreading uh, good food and good cheer and, uh, and just increasing folks a sense of uh, well-being and camaraderie. Well, that is certainly a stark contrast to some of the reports you do see on the news in terms of the creative energy and enthusiasm. I was feeling excited myself as you were talking like, oh, I'd love to, I'd love to participate in some of those things myself right now. So right, that, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Are there any other um, ideas or concepts or strategies that you'd like to share before we wrap up today? You know, Janice, another thing that came to mind that we didn't really mention, but I think that uh, is really quite noteworthy is, you know, many of our residents have the need to feel as though they are connected with the external community, certainly, and that they have the need to feel uh, to give back to the external community. And so to foster that concept of volunteerism, that deep need for our residents, all during this pandemic, we have held a number of, of volunteer experiences, such as uh, food drives. We, we uh, successfully completed food drives across all of our communities. Um, we, uh, we did um, toy drives, toy for, toys for tots and toy drives uh, during uh, the holiday season, and also recently have completed a coat drive um, within our, our communities. So uh, those were ways that we were able to uh, allow uh, that experience to continue. Well, thank you for sharing that because I think that connection to community is so critical as well as that must have fostered a sense of not only well-being but a sense of purpose mm -hmm. for many of the residents, So, um, which really is so important. Um, so yeah. Cindy and Diane, you mentioned uh, virtual connections as one opportunity that older adults living in their homes and self-isolating in their homes could access uh, to promote some engagement and activity. What are some things that friends and family members of those older adults living at home what kinds of strategies could they use to reach out, connect, and engage with those older adults that are socially isolating in their homes? Sure. Um, you know, a couple of things that, that we have heard uh, about from families who have had loved ones at home and perhaps have brought them into our communities for a respite or short-term stay, things that families are doing and should be doing or, you know, even if it's just that quick daily call, you know, don't feel like you, you are going to be taking an hour of your time, your entire lunch hour, whatever it might be, but that quick in quick check-in call to mom or dad can make all the difference. Um, particularly if there might be two or three family members making those, those daily calls, um, being sure that, that, 
older adult living at home has access to food, water, um, medications. That is key. That is, if we were talking about baseline needs, that's at the bottom of the pyramid. But I think we sometimes take that for granted that those older adults may know how to uh, set up medication delivery or set up grocery delivery. So that's, I think, very important. And ways that you can keep them feeling connected are so critical, whether that's uh, sending them a, a crayon drawing from a great grandchild or a card perhaps from an older grandchild, um, small gifts of perhaps games, uh, a Sudoku book, whatever they might enjoy, really just being sure that they know they're top of mind all the time and providing things that can enable them to stay busy and connected. Yeah, those care packages mm -hmm. are, are always a welcome treat, right? Um, yeah. I've also um, had friends and colleagues that have done some driveway, porch, or deck yes. visits, you know, so you're still social distancing, um, and you could even bring food and drink, but do it in a safe way where you're, mm -hmm. you know, you have separate containers, disposable, um, you know, items, you know, in terms of plates and, and those kinds mm -hmm. of things that can also be effective. But Absolutely. Diane, did you want to add anything to that? Surely, uh, Janice, uh, you know, what comes to mind as well is just to have families uh, foster the use of uh, technology with their loved ones to, if they don't have an iPad um, and are living uh, socially isolated, to get them, uh, you know, to get them uh, the technology that will help them uh, be able to remain uh, connected, uh, to use technology for by having uh, you know zoom meetings or uh, you know uh, connecting via a messenger a Facebook messenger or uh, you know the iPad to uh, to really uh, connect encouraging uh, virtual uh, religious um, meetings with their uh, their pastor and, and the like uh, so I, I think that that's another way that uh, families can kind of ensure that their loved one uh, remains socially uh, connected uh, during this uh, time of uh, more social isolation. Yeah, th those are great ideas. Thank you for sharing them. This has been a very informative and interesting and, and really even exciting conversation today. Um, thank you so much to Diane Byrne and Cindy Longfellow from Juniper Communities for sharing their expertise and ideas with us today. And we hope that our audience will join us another time uh, for Voices on Aging, sponsored by Juniper Communities. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you.